SpaceX is not losing momentum anytime soon. As we discussed in the last episode, the FAA will not let Starship go until a mishap investigation is completed. Basically, this means Starship's reaching orbit is going to be delayed for quite some time, but the Starship's program certainly won't be pushed back. This will be the time for SpaceX to prepare everything moving forward. In fact, yesterday, while Ship 25 and Booster 9 received a few hugs from the chopsticks, Ship 26 moved from the build side to the launch site and later attached to the crane. It was finally lifted onto the suborbital B for potential static fire testing. This will definitely be a test campaign worth looking forward to because of Ship 26's functionality. Aside from a range of smaller design changes, Ship 26 has three main differences relative to most prior starships. First, it has zero heat shield tiles. Since the 2020 to 2021 period of suborbital starship flight testing, all finished ships from S-20 to S-25 have been fitted with around 10,000 black ceramic heat shield tiles. Eventually, those tiles will theoretically protect starships from the intense heat created by re-entering Earth's atmosphere at orbital velocity. Ship 26 also has no flaps. Since SpaceX first fully assembled a starship back in October of 2020, every ship the company has ever completed from SN8 to SN25 has had four large flaps and four fitting aero covers installed. Starships need flaps to steer and orient themselves during orbital re-entries. They also need flaps to control themselves during exotic landing maneuvers, which require ships to free fall belly down like a human skydiver and aggressively flip into a vertical orientation for propulsive landings. Finally, and most confusingly, Ship 26 has no payload bay of any kind. The end result is a smooth, featureless starship that looks like a steel bullet, which can't return to Earth and can't deploy satellites. When you take a step back and take a look at this thing, the fact that it exists at all almost seems like an elaborate multi-month mistake, but SpaceX clearly intended to build Ship 26 and is now preparing to qualify for flight. Personally, I think the plan is to launch it after Ship 25 if Ship 25 succeeds in reaching low Earth orbit. If not, they will send another one before Ship 26, but as always, it's all speculation. But let's talk about another noteworthy endeavor at Starbase, a substantial manifold and several new valves for the Deluge system, sorry, Deluge system, have been transported to the launch site. At the same time, it appears the four-foot manifold connecting the three larger water tanks for the booster bidet system may have been cut away and removed. There have been speculations about potential issues with the old equipment after the latest Booster 9 static fire, though no official confirmation has been provided. Otherwise, this could serve as a beneficial upgrade to the original components. SpaceX, meanwhile, has a temporary and intermittent road delay of Highway 4 today from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. This can be the time for them to transport Booster 11 or Ship 29 to Massey's. Ship 29, now repositioned in the high bay, is receiving the remaining of its TPS tiles between its sections. Can't wait to see what happens next to this iteration. Meanwhile, Ship 28 is at the engine installation stand nearby to have its Raptor engines installed. Ships currently use three Raptor sea level and three Raptor vacuum engines with larger nozzles. This preparation suggests that Ship 28 may be the next ship to fly after Ship 25, although nothing is set in stone. At the production site, the Mega Bay construction work is still going on and rapidly. There was a strange delivery earlier this week. It was then lifted into the Mega Bay 1 on the right side. What do you think this is? What do you think it's for? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Next up in our news for today, see Aerospace just announced they started working with NASA on Crew Dream Chaser. In June, Sierra Space and NASA signed an unfunded Space Act agreement under the Space Agency's Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities 2, or CCSC2 initiative. CCSC2 is part of NASA's effort to help foster commercial activities in Earth orbit as the Space Agency prepares for the decommissioning of the International Space Station in 2013. Sierra Space's CCSC2 agreement focuses primarily on the development of a crewed Dream Chaser and the Large Integrated Flexible Environment Pathfinder Module, conveniently abbreviated to LIFE. LIFE will be launched into orbit to test the module's inflatable technology. Sierra Space has a contract to deliver cargo to the ISS using automated Dream Chaser spacecraft. The first flight is scheduled for next year. Sierra Space is working with Blue Origin and other partners to develop the Orbital Reef 
space station to accommodate research, tourism, and other commercial activities. The station will be composed of life modules that are three stories tall and 8.2 meters in diameter. The CCSC2 agreement gives Sierra Space access to specialized expertise that NASA has on safety systems, avionics, abort systems, and other areas required for human spaceflight. The space agency will gain insights into the Colorado-based company's plans and further its efforts to ensure a U.S. presence in Earth orbit after the ISS is decommissioned. NASA and Sierra Space will pay for their own costs under the unfunded agreement. NASA listed the full value of its cooperation with Sierra Space at $6.8 million in a document posted on the space agency's website. Sierra Space is also working with two NASA centers under reimbursable Space Act agreements in which the company is paying the space agency for its services. The company is working with the Marshall Space Flight Center on habitat development and burst tests on its inflatable technology under an agreement valued at $16.1 million. Other agreements Sierra Space has signed with NASA is a collaboration with Johnson Space Center's Hypervelocity Impact Technology Group to develop micrometeoroid and orbital debris shielding for its orbital modules. The company will reimburse the center with around $93,000 for its work. Lastly, Sierra Space signed an unfunded Space Act agreement with NASA headquarters on the development of a low-cost, high-temperature reusable thermal protection system for the Dream Chaser shuttle. NASA listed the value of the collaboration at around $375,000 on its website. The CCSC2 agreement includes 33 milestones divided between the crewed Dream Chaser and Life Pathfinder programs. Meanwhile, Relativity Space also expanded its presence at NASA's Stennis Space Center in Mississippi by leasing an Apollo-era test stand to support the development of its Terran R rocket. The company announced on September 7th that it signed an agreement with Stennis to lease the A-2 test stand at the center. Relativity will pay $2.76 million to lease the test stand for seven years with an option to extend the lease for an additional 10. The A-2 test stand was built in the 1960s for testing the second stage of the Saturn V rocket, then used for space shuttle main engine tests throughout most of the shuttle program. It was mothballed nearly a decade ago after brief use testing the J-2X engine intended for the Ares rockets NASA had planned to develop for the Constellation program. Relativity said it will refurbish the stand to support vertical testing of the reusable first stage of its Terran R rocket, increasing the engine thrust it can support from 650,000 to 3.3 million pound force. The company said the stand will enable a faster pace of testing of the stage. Relativity has been using other facilities at Stennis for several years, testing engines both for its original Terran 1 small launch vehicle and the larger Terran R. The company announced in October of 2022 plans to build new test stands, office buildings, and a vehicle hangar at Stennis. Relativity says it plans to invest $267 million overall on developing its facilities at Stennis, but did not disclose how much of that would go to the refurbishment of the A2 test stand. The A2 test stand adds 30 acres to its footprint at Stennis, which now totals 298 acres. The company is the largest commercial tenant at the center. This increased footprint is a testament to Relativity's continued progress in the commercial space arena, said Rick Gilbrick, director of Stennis, in an agency statement. It also is a testament to the value of NASA Stennis and our test complex infrastructure and in supporting commercial space endeavors. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.